Hi guys, um, so I just got back from Lake George with my dog. We were going on a walk around the water, just us. <laughs> um, it was very peaceful. Um, however, I still can't wait until we're all able to be back around each other, all of us humans intermingling. Wouldn't that be nice? Um, so this video I have pulled to address the StoryWorks text that you'll be reading um, regarding the elephants and the mice. Okay, this one, uh, you still have like two weeks out for this, but I know that some of you are getting ahead with your work, which is great. Um, so for those of you who are a little bit of ahead of the game, want to get started on this, this is for you. And for those of you who are watching this right around the time it will be due, cool, this is still for you. <laughs> okay, so um, this is the packet that goes along with the text, The Elephants and the Mice. Okay, this very first portion goes from the front to the back. It's called Picture That. This is not too crazy far off from what we do, well, what we did every single week, right at the beginning of the week with our new sets of spelling and vocabulary words for whatever text that we were reading in school, right? So it's just set up visually. It just looks a little differently from the sheets I gave you, but it's still pretty much the exact same concept, okay? So they have a column that says word, quote, definition, picture. This is just like how on our spelling and vocab sheets, I would have columns for the word, columns for um, the context clues, so a quote that used that word that we would notice in our reading and you'd jot that down as well as a column for the definition. And then you guys would also sketch a picture to help you um, connect that word to what it means with the definition. That's what you're doing here. The layout just looks a little different from the sheets that I would give you, okay? So in a way, you guys are already champs with this. Um, and like I said, this goes from the front to the back of the page, okay? So that's the picture that. Um, next, we have comparing characters, okay? So it says... Answer the questions in the chart below to help you compare the characters of Uma and Mohan. Then answer the questions that follow about each character. We have done compare contrast writing. Um, we have had compare contrast discussions in class. You guys know how to analyze that information, right? Um, take information that compares two characters, take information that contrasts two characters. You're pretty darn good at doing that, okay? This page just breaks it up um, in a particular way. So this top graphic organizer, it says you are going to be comparing the two of them. So it says in scene three, for example, just for number one, how do Uma and Mohan each want to stop the elephants from just elephant? <laughs> elephants from destroying their village. So what you would do is you would go back, you would use that clue that they give you. They tell you right where to look. You go to scene three and you would write how Uma wants to stop the elephants from destroying the village. And then you would go back into scene three and you would find out how Mohan wanted to try to stop the elephants from destroying their village. Okay. Look where it tells you to look. They're giving you a little gift here. You'll notice in number two, it tells you, look in scene four. Number three, look in scene five. They are directing you where to go to find your information. Use those helpful clues, okay? Now for number four, number five, they're written responses. You guys will be restating the question full and giving a beautiful detailed answer, okay? Um, Please make sure that if for whatever reason you run out of space with your writing, you continue over onto like a sheet of loose leaf. But make sure that your loose leaf has your name on it, just in case anything gets lost in the shuffle. Just play it out exactly as you would do if we were all in class together, okay? Sound good? So this section here, we're talking about comparing and contrasting different characters that we have met in this text, okay? All right, let's flip the page. Okay, finding the theme, okay? It says, directions, the theme of a story, of which we've talked about, is the big important idea that you take away from reading it, okay? Answer each of the questions in the chart below about the elephants and the mice, then respond to the questions that follow. Remember when we talked about um, 
theme and class and I even showed you guys like a little video it was with Tim and Moby it was on brain pop and they were trying to like recreate the Star Wars story in their silly way that they did so and they talked about how a main theme in the Star Wars movies is this whole idea of goodness versus evil about how lightness wins out over darkness right and so that was a theme that's carried all throughout the movie throughout every single movie because we know there's a lot of those movies all right so what you need to do is to think about hmm what is this theme for the elephants and the mice now it kind of gives you a graphic organizer and it wants you to kind of track your thoughts and break it down to come up with your whole answer so we have a column that says at first and then a column that says by the end of the story all right and number one it wants you to think about okay how does uma treat the elephant king at first and then how does uma treat the elephant king by the end of the story. Then it asks you, how does Mohan treat the elephants at first and then by the end of the story? And then how do the elephants' actions affect the mice at first and then by the end of the story? Sometimes looking about or looking at how things unfold um, when you think about how something starts off versus where it ends up kind of helps you figure out things like, hmm, the theme of a story. Number four and number five, you will also notice, kind of just like the page before, you have written response questions now, along with a graphic organizer. So once again, restate your question in full and give a nice, beautiful, detailed answer. You guys. We have talked a lot about plot. Remember the cute little plot diagram on blue paper that I gave you all um, to put in the handout section of your notes? And I gave this to you back when we were doing Percy Jackson because like there's a little like Zeus <laughs> character that's going up Mount Olympus then coming down Mount Olympus. But I said, hold on to this sheet. We're going to be referring back to it. Okay, um, well, that's this plot. You're going to recognize, oh, um, opening action. Okay, we called it the fancy schmancy name in class, which is the exposition, okay? Then it says rising action, all right? Rising action, kind of the things that are taking you up to the most important part of the story. Then we have climax, falling action, and conclusion, okay? So you might notice, maybe you didn't, but I'm just gonna tell you now, <laughs> if you didn't notice already, conflict is missing from this specific plot line diagram. That doesn't make it a wrong plot line diagram. That just makes it a plot line diagram that is focusing on one less step than what we usually would do in class, okay? So for anybody who's like, oh, this is wrong, it's not wrong. It's just a different layout. It's a layout with one less step than what we would cover. I would say we kind of would do a more thorough version of plot line diagram when we would do our six steps. That doesn't make this one wrong. So I just wanted to put anybody's minds at ease if you were all going, oh, where's the conflict stage? It's not there on purpose, okay? Um, so really all you have to do is fill in the adjoining um, information for the opening action, the exposition, the rising action, the climax, the falling action, the conclusion regarding this text, all right, of the elephants and the mice. So that's what you're going to do best you can. Use your text, go back into it to help you. However, put things in your own words. We all know that that's the drill we always follow. Now you will notice. <laughs> this, this was on me. This was what we call a mistake on my part. Um, can I just relive what Monday and Tuesday was like when all of this first began? That first Monday and Tuesday, you guys were not in school. Um, we had meetings and then we'd go back to our class and we were trying to put together work that would be meaningful to send home with you guys, then we'd be pulled for other meetings, which were very important meetings. It was a tornado whirlwind of two days. So among that whirlwind, when I was trying to get myself down to the copier, I didn't pull out from what I fed through the copier, this page right here. This second quiz page should not have been photocopied in. What I want you guys to do is this page right here the first quiz 
please don't do this one. This should not have been in my pile. It was one that I meant to feed out, thought I did, apparently didn't. But honestly, you guys, after I had photocopied, stapled 40 packets worth, I just didn't have it in my heart to like put it all in the recycling bin. Cause like, even though it would have been recycling, I still would have felt like I wasted <laughs> all of that paper and time. So you are only doing this quiz. The first one, you will look for the HL in the corner. That's what you're all doing, okay? Forget about this guy. Don't do it. I mean, if you really want to, sure. But you, this is the one I want you doing, okay? It has the eight questions and then the two constructed responses. Now, remember, you can um, do your constructed responses on a sheet of loose leaf paper. However, you will notice on the back of this accidental page, there is a blank page. If you have no loose leaf paper at home, cool. You have a blank sheet of paper, all right? Just write carefully and neatly so it is readable because you won't have lines there for you, all right? I want to reiterate, I know I've said this in every single video, but if you think that you and your family are going to have a difficult time getting over to school to drop your work off in the drop bins um, by the due dates, okay? You can, I'm okay with if you have mom or dad or whoever, take a picture, for example, with their phone or something like that, and then upload it and email it to me um, or, or upload it into Google Classroom. You can get it to me electronically. I will be okay with that so long as it's by the same due date um, because I understand maybe with some of your schedules, it might be tricky to get to school by the due date, all right? So if you get it to me electronically, I'm also okay with that. Hey, guess what I'm going to still need to see on your paper? First, no. Mm hmm Your beautiful little names. Names of all the little friends and faces of you guys that I miss so much. So, yeah, you guys, this, um, this packet isn't due until, I'm trying to do quick math, April 10th. I think it's April 10th. Like I said, I'm doing this early, okay? But if you are one of those people who you are already ahead of the game and you wanna get started, this informational video being put up early could help you. So that's why I wanted to do it a little bit ahead of time. Um, I hope this finds you well. I hope you're doing great. I am really missing you guys so, so much. You are all such a stellar group and it just hurts my heart to know I don't get to see you every single day, but we're all doing the responsible thing right now and that's what's important. So I hope this finds you well. Um, much love. Bye.